Hi everyone, and welcome back to this comprehensive video series covering all things 3D modeling in Clip Studio Paint. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, please check them out so you can catch up with us. And with that being said, let's continue. Next, I'm going to talk about what's called the object launcher. We're going to go through all these little icons and I'm going to explain what they do. So these arrows, these just sort through your object list. So if I go next, it's just going to go to the next model, cycle through them all. This is really good if you have a model off screen and by off screen, I mean off canvas. So you may have dragged a model onto your canvas and it's not there. You have no idea where it is. That probably means it's off somewhere in the space, just hasn't gone onto the canvas properly. You can sift through the models and actually find it. So I'm gonna actually zoom out a bunch. And I'm going to drag our chair right off into the netherworld and go back to our door. I can't see it anywhere. All I have to do is go, oh, there it is. It's somewhere off here. I zoom out, oh, there it is. And I can just grab the perspective and drag it back onto the canvas. That's all these arrows do. Just just cycle through your layers. Very useful tool if you have a lot of models on the screen. The next one brings up, as you can see, the display object list. This is everything that is in your 3D space. It's actually here as well, although you have to press the drop down menu to access it. But if you want a more spacious view, this is a little cramped, you can just click the wrench and bring it up. So the camera is always there because your eyes are technically the camera. Your, the view is the camera. Ambient light is what it described as. So it's just the what you call bouncing light. So light just doesn't dissipate when it hits the floor. It bounces off, oh, getting weaker and weaker. So this is just that. But directional light, so that's the actual light source. Say like the sun, if we get rid of that completely, it's in darkness. That's also very important. The second directional light is great if it's an artificial light source. So say your character is in a club and there's a neon sign over here and then there is just a I don't know, a lamp or something here i don't know what kind of club that is we can have one directional light coming from this side and we can do another one coming from this side and as you can very clearly see if i click on it you can actually change the color of the light which is just great so if i want to come from let's say over here and i want it blue and i want the other direction to come from here and i want that to be like a warm yellowy kind of light it's harder to explain and view on 3D models. It's more so on human models. So here we have a list of our models and the eye is just signifying what is seen in the space. So right now we have the door and the chair, but I can put our human in as well and our primitive cube. You can change the names just by double clicking. So let's change that to human just so we have an idea. And that's all that wrench icon does. It just brings up this window. So let's get rid of other models and close it. The next one is about angles. Now, some models will have their own, but these ones are the standard. So you've probably seen me doing this a couple of times, clicking this one. This just is a face on view, but we can do a side on view, either side, three quarters, back. These ones are great for character turnarounds. So you can draw your character in all different angles, keeping them level. It's great for concept art. Because for concept art, you want everything uniform. You want exactly how this character is going to look at every angle. These are just close-ups. Doesn't really change for your 3D models. Let's get a human up, actually. Might be a better. So let's click on him. Bring up the object launcher and click middle. And then we got him right in the space and we can turn him around. This is just a really quick way of getting things done. And I want him up close. Side close, three quarters, all of it. Even closer. So I guess if you've been to film school or if you've studied film a little bit, you've got your close-ups, your mid shots, your long shots. Let's just get back to the middle and we'll get our door back. Trusty door. I tend to use this one the most just to get back into the middle, which is pointless because the next one right here centers the object in the page, so I should use that one more. I just don't, but I will. <laughs> now that I've drawn attention to it, I will. Hi guys, sorry for the interruption, but if you're enjoying this video and it's helping you, please give it a like and a share so others can find it. 
what helped you might help someone else. If you could also subscribe, that'd be great too. There'll be plenty of videos in this series, so click that big black button below so you don't miss a single one. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. Um, this one I use all the time and this is just to place your model on the ground. So let's say I've been screwing around with the model. I want it up on in the sky or I've accidentally moved it up in the sky. I don't want to have to grab the Y axis arrow and perfectly like line it up. That is going to be an absolute pain. Although I did pretty well actually. I think I've got it perfect. That's pretty cool. Oh, okay, a little bit. So yeah, if you saw just by clicking it, it jumped up a bit and that places the model on the ground level, the grid. So again, I'll push it down like that, and it pops back up, which is invaluable for making scenes, especially when you need everything even on the same plane. This next one here is the reset movement and by that, the parts. So if we click once and then click again on the door and I move this around, just to have it open. Again, there's an easier way of doing this, which I will explain later. And I don't like it. I'm like, ew, no. All I have to do is click reset and everything returns to the default layout. The next one right here is the scale. So I've clicked on our model and say I want a tiny weeny little door and oops, no, I don't want that. All I have to do is just reset the scale. So there we go. It goes back to normal. Try it again with a big version. It's huge. Click that and it goes back to normal. But the reset scale also applies for these new boxes. So again, if you just want to back, click that. The last one is rotation. So if I've screwed around with the door and I really don't like it, all I have to do is select reset rotation. So you see the little arrow in the movement? It's just rotation. This symbol here is reset. So you, you can see a tiny version of this icon in these two. So this is just rotation, this is scale. We just click reset rotation and we get it back. And I'll click send to get it back to the center. The last three, uh, you're probably gonna use a lot. These little symbols represent a hand holding a ball of some kind. Yeah. That's the imagery they were going for, okay? But as you can see in the first one, the hand is holding a ball with stripes and that's gonna give you a clue as to what it does. That changes the color or the texture of the model. Again, not all models are gonna have, this is up to the user who has created the model if they've included textures. So this is all this one is, textures. Now, if we click on it, we're gonna get a lot because I chose this model specifically. So a lot of the times I'll be in Japanese because Clip Studio is a Japanese program. Um, it's really unfortunate you can't change these. That's something I would really want in the future. So I know what the heck is going on, but you can see. And if they don't include an icon, just click on them. Just click on them and see what's what. So if we click the first one, we've got a wooden door with a gold handle. As you can see, they're all gold in this column and it's just the wood that it's changing. So we've got these two medium woods, dark wood, and then we've got a light wood, very light wood. This column, silver handle, this one, bronze handle. Got the Olympics indoor handles right now. Color can also impact um, how you extract lines from 3D models and the textures. So they can be useful and I'll show you that much later on. So we've got a what looks like a white wood. That looks nice with the silver, I think. Black wood, red, more of a yellow, and then we've just got the basic. So this is what we've been looking at the entire time. But just for now, I think the white one looks nice. Yeah, we'll keep that one for now. All right, the next hand is holding just a solid ball and that represents the model itself. So clicking this will actually change the layout of the model. And I chose again this door because it has a lot. Not all models are gonna have this. So we click two, it's changing the layout. We've got glass, let's rotate this just a tad so we can see and lots of little changes to the actual physical part of the door. So the last one is also a solid ball, but it has this little kind of symbol there. And the symbol is actually uh, a very common symbol in 3D modeling in general. It's the bones, a bones of a 3D object. So if you model a character in Blender and you have to put a skeleton for movability on that character, it will look like that. It's like a pyramid kind of shape. But what this represents is just movability. So if your model has any parts that move, which this one does, you'll find it here. So this one is just opening the door. Again, they're in Japanese uh, or Korean. Some models are made by English speakers, so they'll be in English. But again, just if they're not just fiddle. And that's it for this video. So please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. Don't forget to like and share and thank you for watching. Bye.